Hey internet friends! 2017 has been a year of continued political tensions, ongoing war at home and abroad, extreme weather, and stunning revelations. While yellow journalism and blatant government propaganda has kept the truth hidden from the general public for quite some time, discouraging free thought by labeling anyone who dared to question the narrative a conspiracy theorist, the term is losing some of its power as 2017 draws to a close. An information war is underway, with news stories flying like rapid gunfire. It's almost too much information to take in all at once. With a large chunk of the information validating the ramblings of those who were once disregarded as conspiracy theorists. So we can't let this information get swept under the rug now, can we? No way. That's why today we're going to take a moment to keep score by discussing the conspiracy theories that became conspiracy facts in 2017. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theory. Rumors of the Hollywood casting couch and pedophilia have been swirling since the days of Shirley Temple. But until recently, those who were outspoken about what goes on behind the curtain were few and far between. Their stories given very little attention by mainstream media. However, in October, that all changed when dozens of sexual harassment, assault, and rape allegations emerged about the concert promoter turned film producer and co-founder of Miramax Films, Harvey Weinstein. Seemingly emboldened by the initial cast speaking out, other accounts of sexual abuse flooded in, pointing blame not only at Harvey Weinstein, but at other actors like Kevin Spacey, who was accused of sexual abuse towards a teenage boy. As some have suspected and even attempted to voice, this has been Hollywood's norm for some time. So why is Hollywood self-imploding now? If celebrities have known about serial abusers within their own profession, why did they not speak up before? Is the fall of the celebrity elite by design? Or is there another conspiracy to overthrow the current Hollywood structure? And are we, the general public, being desensitized to sexual abuse and distracted by the circus? Distracted from our own horrors which occur in our neighborhoods regularly? Or perhaps are we being distracted from the other news released in the shadow of the ongoing Hollywood sex abuse saga? The final batch of JFK files were released during the last week of October. For over 50 years, the American public has been told that the assassination of JFK was the work of one lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald. However, the release of these formerly sealed files revealed that Oswald didn't work alone. The Surgeon General's report on the assassination stated that the first bullet entered the president's throat below the Adam's apple clearly showing that two persons were involved with the first shot being fired from the bridge across the parkway in front of the car. Furthermore, there has been an ongoing effort on behalf of the US government to convince the American public that 24-year-old Oswald was solely responsible. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover wrote that he was worried that conspiracy theories would take over the narrative, writing, the thing I am concerned about is having something issued so we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. Tell me, are y'all convinced Oswald is the real assassin? These JFK files held many surprising revelations, and not all of them were about JFK, leading us into our next conspiracy fact. After his forces were surrounded, Adolf Hitler committed suicide in a bunker in Berlin. At least that's what we were told anyway. <laughs> One time I even paid for a tour over that bunker, led by a guide who told the group that Hitler shot himself in the head. Now I want my money back because CIA files, which were released alongside these recent JFK files, revealed that the CIA was investigating Hitler's whereabouts in 1955. An eyewitness had met a concentration of Nazis in Colombia, and they addressed the man who claimed to be Hitler as Der Führer. At the time of this investigation, Hitler could no longer be prosecuted as a criminal of war. 
because it had been over 10 years since the end of World War II. This news really makes me do a double take at all these photos of Hitler after World War II that were disregarded as fiction. Speaking of post-World War II, the State of Israel was established in 1948. But even though Israel is located in the Middle East, the Zionist state has major influence in the US. Which brings us to our next theory turned fact. The United States of Israel. Those who have spoken out about a Zionist influence in US elections and legislature have not only been labeled conspiracy theorists, but also anti-Semites. But this conspiracy fact was established long ago with the power and sway of AIPAC, which describes itself as a bipartisan organization of US citizens committed solely to strengthening, protecting, and promoting the US-Israel relationship. And even though on their website, AIPAC says it's an American pro-Israel lobby with members spread over city and state chapters, as well as lobbyists all over DC, AIPAC is not registered as a foreign lobby, which is, illegal. But anywho, the United States of Israel conspiracy fact was recently reinforced in Hurricane Harvey's aftermath when Dickinson, Texas's application for repair grants made applicants agree not to boycott Israel, therefore making hurricane relief contingent on not boycotting Israel. This comes months after Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed anti-BDS legislation in May. If you didn't already know, BDS, or the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Movement, is a global campaign attempting to increase economic and political pressure on Israel to end what it describes as violations of international law. If you're planning on boycotting Israel in Dickinson, Texas, sorry, no hurricane relief for you. I gotta ask, would there be more outrage if the application said that applicants couldn't get hurricane relief if they boycotted, I don't know, Mexico or China or Switzer Switzerland? The United States of Israel is a conspiracy fact, and it leaves me with more questions about the exploitation of natural disasters or not so natural disasters especially when there are around 175 weather modification and geoengineering United States patents that exist today. And it's a fact that weather warfare has been utilized as early as the Vietnam War, when the United States ran a cloud seeding program to extend the monsoon season. This was known as Operation Popeye. Conspiracy theory. Speaking of illegal activity, the term conspiracy theorist was probably relayed in record numbers on mainstream media last year, when the Podesta emails were released by WikiLeaks, bringing us to the Podesta crime family theory turned fact. These emails belong to Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, and they spawned a number of theories surrounding the extracurricular activities of brothers John and Tony Podesta as well as their colleagues. Additionally, John Podesta has been quite the conspiracy theorist himself on Russian collusion. However, the Podesta's lobbying firm, the Podesta Group, represented Uranium One, a Russian-owned company during the Obama administration. But the Podesta Group didn't file as a foreign agent, despite lobbying for Uranium One. And to add some more kindling to this trash can fire, the Podesta group did not disclose the extent of its political work for a Ukrainian group tied to former Trump advisor, Paul Manafort, who was indicted by special counsel for the United States Department of Justice, Robert Mueller, who, by the way, was in charge of the FBI on 9-11, but is now head of the current Russia investigation. Keep in mind that both Tony and John Podesta founded the Podesta group, so only time will tell what kind of dirt these men have been hiding as the investigation continues to unfold. But what we already know about them is that the Podestas entertain their friends with Marina Abramovic's blood and breast milk spirit cooking dinners, and they're collectors of weird, sexually suggestive artwork of children, as well as artwork displaying cannibalism. And that's without me mentioning the code within their emails, which has been connected to code words for young children, though there has been no formal investigation of the content found within these emails, nor have there been any arrests, so it's not an established fact that the Podestas are guilty of any sexual abuse allegations. Despite the failed presidential campaign, the personal drama, and the allegations, 
John Podesta is a contributing columnist at the CIA propaganda outlet known as the Washington Post. His brother, Tony Podesta, who is going down for these charges with the Podesta group, stepped down from the Podesta group, but still their family is at the top of our government hierarchy like heads of the mafia. And that's before I even arrive at their involvement. And our final point, our last conspiracy theory, proven as conspiracy fact. The election was totally rigged. Donna Brazil, who assumed the role as interim chairperson for the DNC after Debbie Wasserman Schultz resigned in 2016, admitted this past week that the DNC rigged the election against Bernie Sanders, stating that the Clinton campaign had full control over the DNC. It was documented in leaked emails that Brazil provided CNN debate questions to the Clinton campaign, and I want to say she's just as guilty as everyone else who rigged the election in Clinton's favor. However, that new book of Donna's ain't gonna sell itself. And it is of note that she dedicated her book to Patriot and murdered DNC staffer, Seth Rich, whose death, she claimed, made her fear for her own life. Keep in mind, this is the same Donna who still sticks to the narrative that Russians played a major role in the election. A class action lawsuit was filed against the DNC in 2016 for rigging the primaries against Bernie Sanders. But the judge dismissed the lawsuit after several months of litigation during which the DNC attorneys argued that the DNC would be well within their rights to select their own candidate. Donna Brazil's claims reestablished that yes, the primaries were rigged. And she implies that Seth Rich's death was anything but a botch robbery. So what will happen as a result? Is Donna just doing her job as a pawn? Is she just trying to sell some books? Tell me, internet friends, did any of 2017's revelations result in a personal paradigm shift for you? Are you surprised by any of these conspiracy theories turned conspiracy facts? Does the term conspiracy theorist have any impact as a means of discouraging free thought? Let me know. I always look forward to your comments. Thank you all so much for subscribing and supporting my channel on Patreon.